Okay, so uh, in the last part, we uh, opened up Ghidra, did a little bit of a tour, loaded up our DLL, and uh, started looking through code. We're going to be doing that a lot this semester. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to introduce a second tool that we're going to be using throughout the semester. It's a debugger called Cheat Engine. A cheat Engine is was known as an external cheat. Um, game trainers are external cheats. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to possibly do a DLL hook and write my own DLL. Um, or maybe just use um, Cheat Engine. I don't know. We'll play it by ear a little bit in this video. We'll see. We'll see how we do. But what I need to do is I need to pull up Cheat Engine and I need to pull up the game. So let me do that. Okay. Turn the music off. And okay, we are in the game. Uh, I can't remember where I was. I think I'm... Oh, I'm by the pirate ship. Oh, I'm far away from the town. But that's fine. That's exactly where we want to be in this case. All right, so uh, I'm in the game, obviously. I'm going to move this over here. This utility back here is Cheat Engine. All right. Essentially, it's a debugger. It's a stripped down debugger after a fashion. We could be doing this with any debugger. We could do it with, with Win uh, GDB if we want. Uh, uh, yeah, GDB if we wanted to. GDB? Win DBG. I'm thinking of a totally different product. DBG. Um, we could, but um, we're, we'll use Cheat Engine. That's fine. What we need to do first is we need to attach this to our game process. So I'll do that. I'm going to click the uh, little icon over here that's blinking green and red. When I do that, I'll select the process from the list. Okay, done. Here you can see the process that it's attached to, Pwn Adventure 332-bit, right there. So we are now, this Cheat Engine is now attached to this process. And through Cheat Engine, uh, we can uh, read memory addresses and change values in memory. Okay, let me show you a quick example here. All right, so right now my mana is 100. So I'm going to try and find memory addresses that contain my mana, the amount of mana that I have. So I'm going to go over here uh, to the value, and I'm going to look for an exact value. I don't know what type of variable it is. It could be anything, but since it's a whole number... And I don't see any decimals, for example. And it has to be used in calculations. Like, we have to subtract a certain amount of mana when I cast a spell. I'm going to assume that it's an int. And it's uh, 100. So unless it's, you know, some kind of weird thing. Well, actually, we can probably look in the code, can't we? Let's see if we can search. Let's search for mana. Oh, use mana. There we go. Perfect. So there's a use mana function. It looks like... Where is our calculation here? Ivar3 equals Ivar3 minus param1. Param1 is an integer. And Ivar3 is an integer. And since we know that this is a 32-bit binary, then we know that an int... I mean, we're 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 not working on sixty sixteen bit systems anymore. Uh, on sixteen bit systems, an int was two bytes, and uh, since we're on a thirty two sixty four bit system, uh, the size of int is a four byte variable. So we're going to keep four, and I'm just going to search for the value one hundred. That's what we want to find. So I enter one hundred into the value field, and I'm going to click first scan. And what we have is essentially all of the memory addresses that are attached to the Pwn Adventure 3 process uh, that have the value of 100 in them right now. Okay? Now, oh, we can see that some of them are, are changing. This is actually updating in real time, right? So this, whatever this memory address is, obviously this is not our mana, because at no point does our mana ever increase to that number of digits. Which means that if I uh, want to, I can even go compared to first scan, and we can say it is unchanged, so it's still 100. So any values that have changed in the meantime will be filtered out. Right now, I have 7,743 addresses. If I hit next scan with unchanged value compared to the first scan, 
Okay, now I have 7,701. So I lost, what, 42 addresses there? Now I can change the value of mana. I can use the mana, and it will be less than 100. So I'm going to set up my next scan. I'm going to say compared to the last scan by unchecking compared to first scan. I don't know exactly how much I'm going to use, because my plan is to just use up a bunch of mana and then switch back to Cheat Engine and run the scan before it has a chance to get back up to 100. So I'm just going to say we're looking for a value that has decreased since the last scan. Then I'm going to go back to the game. I'm going to use a, a bunch of mana, enough to give me time to hop back over to Cheat Engine. That's probably good. And then run the next scan. I'm down to 80 addresses, and my current mana is ticking up. It's at 70-something. We can see that this one is ticking up. It's at 70-something. So this address holds the value of my mana. I'm going to wait for it to fill. Oh, we got a couple of them. <clears throat> there we go. So now I'm going to, compared to the first scan, I'm looking for only memory addresses that have not changed. Uh, actually, I'm going to do exact value again to 100 because I'm not entirely sure if that filters out the red columns. So I'm going to do a compared to first scan value 100. We're down to 23 addresses, and there's a couple of them that obviously aren't the right one, so I'm going to give it a sec. We're down to 20. And it looks like they're all static now. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to do one more test. I'm going to go back to the game. I'm just going to burn a bunch of mana again. I'm going to burn... So almost all of it here. All right, and we're ticking up right away. All right, yes, yeah, some of these are our uh, decreased value from the last scan. There we go. We got three addresses here. Increased since the last scan. There we go. We've got three addresses here that clearly contain the value of our mana. I don't know which one of them is which. It's possible that all three memory addresses uh, hold this value. Um, and uh, a, uh, the uh, variables, excuse me, uh, variables can be essentially um, big enough to span multiple memory addresses. The uh, the most that any of these memory addresses can can hold uh, is is essentially um, is 8 bits, so, you know, if you have a variable that uh, uh, can't be contained in, in 8, then it will it will span more, right? So it'll just be uh, one address pointing to another, pointing to another. We call those pointer paths, right? So there'll be the first address, and that will point to the next address, and the next address until there's enough reserved memory space to uh, uh, to continue, or, or to hold that variable. Okay, um, so we have these, and uh, what I can do is I can select all of them. I'm going to add them all to the selected address list here, and uh, we can, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we can uh, either double-click them and change, well, you can change the description, we can alter the value ourselves, like let's say I enter 50 here. No, nothing happened. Oh, there we go. With that last one, when I entered 50, it changed the value of my mana in-game, but note that it's not uh, increasing. And as soon as I use a spell, it goes back up to 100. So that tells me that this last value is the display value. That's the value that determines what number appears here. But clearly, it doesn't actually hold the value itself. If I put zero in there, in the game, my mana drops to zero. I'm going to come back to that. It's not really why we're here anyway. 
All right, so that's how we can find variables in memory. Uh, just about anything, anything that we can manipulate or change, we can we can find in here. But what I want to find right now is the um, speed. I want to be able to change that. So, just for again reference, this is my regular speed in the game. All right. It's not slow, but it's certainly not speedy either. So I want to change that. So for our um, our initial speed hack, it's super easy with uh, with Cheat Engine. We don't have to go about looking around for uh, the variables or anything like that. Uh, if you have a chance to play around with Cheat Engine, we're going to be using it plenty. Uh, notice over here on the right-hand side, uh, there's a, a built-in speed hack. See if I click Enable, it's set to just one. I go in the game, I'm at my normal speed. And if I tamp that up, let's say five times. And now I'm super fast. It doesn't change my jump height. <clears throat> so there is some work to do. But at least this gets us fast enough to, to get around the game with relatively little trouble. Right? Uh, so that we can get back to, to where we're going here, to the town. And um, now that we have Cheat Engine up and uh, can play around with it, uh, my next step is to develop an internal cheats, which means that I'm going to be pulling a Visual Studio and we're going to be writing code. We're going to try and do a DLL hook and have our own toggleable cheats, which is going to be a little bit of a process. Oh, I noticed the bears are also super fast. Well, they're fast moving anyway. They're not actually chasing me faster, but that's not how they're supposed to look. Okay. I'm going to leave these bears alone here for now. Okay. So, there we go. That's Cheat Engine. That gets us started. And in the next video, we're going to pull up Visual Studio. Then we're going to start writing our own internal cheats. Let me get my speed hack off because that's super annoying. And plus I want to do my own speed hack anyway because I really want to be able to toggle it on and off from within the game without having to tab out uh, all the time to go to Cheat Engine to turn it off and on by changing that slider. I really want to be able to just hit like F2 or something and turn the speed hack on and off. So that's our next goal. Now that we can decompile the code, now that we have the ability to manipulate um, the memory addresses, we can use the two of them to discover what we need to know in order to write our own trainer.
Enterprises Incorporated. A division of Raymond Scott 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 Enterprises Incorporated.